Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 1.33. War has major benefits for society, no matter how much society hates to admit it. I wish there were a war. Then we could prove that we're worth more than anyone bargained for. Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton the Musical. What makes physical power so useful and effective as a means for securing property and settling policy disputes? One explanation could be what Clausewitz already observed. Physical power is completely blind. Physical power doesn't see people's feelings, much less allow to be influenced by them. This makes physical power impartial and virtually immune to politicking. Physical power has no apparent capacity for favoritism, discrimination, or hidden agendas. It can't be manipulated or corrupted. It doesn't appear to have any systemically exploitable attack surface whatsoever because it's exogenous to people's belief systems. For this reason, the court of power functions as a true meritocracy. It gives people the freedom to challenge and change policy regardless of rank and social status. This makes it serve a reliable court of appeals. This makes it serve as a reliable court of appeals for people who are being systemically exploited by an existing dominance hierarchy. Those who feel wronged by their laws can, and often do, turn to su the supreme court of brute force physical power to give them a judge who is mercilessly impartial. Physical powers rulings are quick and decisive. The basis for its judgment is known equally by everyone, and its verdict is easily is easy to audit, making it an easy way to achieve consensus. Another explanation for why physical power is so useful is because it is virtually unlimited and relatively easy to access. There are hard limits to the, the amount of rank, votes, and social status that a person can obtain within their chosen belief system. And these imaginary forms of power are fickle, nepotism, and inegalitarian. It takes a lot of time and effort to ascend existing dominance hierarchies to it, an effort to ascend existing dominance hierarchies. High-ranking positions are often unavailable across multiple generations. It's far easier and more achievable to simply change the existing dominance hierarchy than to climb through the ranks of the existing one. Revolution. Physical power is very different. This is virtually no limit to the amount of physical power that people can summon to shape, enforce, and secure the policies they value. Physical power is accessible via one's own ingenuity and merit, as opposed to rank or social status. People also tend to respect physical power more because of how self-evident it is. Physical power is proof of its own merit. It doesn't need anyone to believe in it to know its worthiness. It is in stark contrast to rank and social status, which are both part of abstract, artificial, and inegalitarian belief systems, which are incontrovertibly vulnerable to exploitation and abuse from those who have the most rank and social status. Therefore, as much as people hate to admit it, there are major benefits to war which would explain why societies wage it so frequently. Moreover, from a socio-technical perspective, war has proven efficacy. It has clearly played a major part in the formation of high-functioning ag agrarian societies. Virtually every nation today was forged through war. National borders are sculpted by war. The development of state-of-the-art technology is often accelerated by war. The most warring societies on earth have consistently had the largest economies. Despite how unpopular it is to talk about the benefits of war, it could be useful to at least take the time to understand what those benefits are so we could understand why it keeps happening.
if you stop listening because you hear the words war, the word violence, which I believe he took out almost entirely from the text, these turn you off. You have to realize that's a problem with you. You're trying to rewrite the entire planet's evolutionary process by pretending those words aren't important. Back to the text. <clears throat> Despite how unpopular it is to talk about the benefits of war, it could be useful to at least take the time to understand what those benefits are so we can understand why it keeps happening. Endeavoring to understand the benefits of war could help us learn how to design systems that minimize our need for those benefits. Alternatively, endeavoring to understand the benefits of war could help us gain insights about ways to wage it better, perhaps in, a, in softer ways that are far less destructive. In the author's opinion, understanding the merit of war is key to understanding the merit of new technologies like Bitcoin. <laughs> 